Getting a job in software engineering is not easy, especially in 2024. If you're only applying for the big tech companies on LinkedIn Easy Apply, to be brutally honest, you're never gonna get that call back. Big tech is coming off some hard layoffs right now. So if you wanna be realistic about your job search, start looking for no-name companies that no one has ever heard of. That's how I actually got my first job. I would have loved to have worked at a bigger company, but big companies want people with experience. The best way to get experience is working at those smaller companies first. Think of it as a stepping stone. I feel like once you have your foot in the door somewhere, then recruiters start reaching out to you like on LinkedIn, like much easier than if you're just unemployed and then like trying to find a job. <laughs> so if you want to look for companies outside of just big tech, ZipRecruiter is a really good resource to look into. You can, of course, just use LinkedIn for easy apply, but usually LinkedIn is really expensive for companies to use. So the bigger companies tend to put their job postings there. So a good hack is to actually use a site like ZipRecruiter, which makes it a lot easier for the barrier of entry for smaller companies. OK, so you can see here that I have a list of jobs specifically for a junior developer role. But of course, I put my resume and I have more experience than a junior developer. But you can see, of course, ZipRecruiter put its own openings at the top of the stack. But if you just scroll down, there's a lot of no-name companies. So Erie Custom Computer Application. Capital One isn't a no-name company, but keep scrolling down. You'll see another one, Erie Custom Computer Applications, Star & Associates. There's a lot of different companies. So let's click on one of them. So here you can see more about the actual job and there's a one click apply kind of like linkedin and because you've already uploaded your resume they make it really easy to apply for these jobs and there's going to be a lot less people applying to these jobs as well so you can see this one is more of a hourly job and it's for a contractor so it gives all of the information as well as what's in store so this is just a contractor job eight month project 100 percent remote 40 hours a week the tech stack is kind of highlighted below as well as the technical competencies sought a lot of information information out there. So if we actually go back, you can also check to see employment type like full time, part time, contract, temporary. You can also check salaries. And I would recommend actually checking within one to five days because that will have the least amount of applicants and you'll have a much better shot as well. So here Erie Custom Computer Applications comes up. Now, if you actually click on the company itself, you can see all the openings that they have. Right. And here you can see that you can just do a one click apply. So there we go. I just, oops, I just applied. So yep, you can go ahead and see that this is a really good option for people that are looking for companies that are not super well known. Of course, you can also go to LinkedIn Easy Apply and do that route as well, but it will be harder, especially because there's already competition in the market. This is gonna be even more difficult to get into. I mentioned this in the past, but most people will already have the right skills when they're applying for these jobs. What they fail to do is market themselves in a way where the company finds them valuable enough to hire them. Hold messaging, recruiters, and hiring managers is no fun. Instead of reaching out to people that are already getting thousands of messages a day, try reaching out to people that aren't getting any messages. I'm talking about the software engineers at these places. First, you wanna search for the company that you're applying for, then search for keywords such as senior engineer or software engineer. Then comes the hard part, actually crafting the message. Let's check out these clips from a recent Discord session I did on how to actually reach out to people on LinkedIn to get them to chat with you. What you want to do is first send a connection request. So you can say, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm a software engineer in the market and I came across this role. I noticed that you work at this company and I would love to learn more about you and your job. So you kind of make it about that person. And then number two, you want to talk about your skills and you want your skills to be in the nice to haves in a job. So a job typically has requirements. You want to be above those requirements. Otherwise, it's really difficult to have a cold call turned into an actual call because recruiters are getting so many job applications with candidates that just meet the requirements. Third thing is make it as easy as possible for the recruiter. You want to find the job ID or multiple job IDs. You want to apply and then you want to send your app link because the recruiter can't help you unless you're actually in their system. So you want to find the job IDs. Don't ask them like, hey, what jobs are available? I have these skills and I would love to work at your company because that means that the recruiter has to first take a chance on you, look for those jobs that might apply to you, send you the jobs. And it's just so many extra steps that they know that you're not taking initiative. So you want to make sure that you're actually taking the time to understand what would prompt others to actually respond to your messages and even take you up on that coffee chat. Having other 
underemployed software engineers in your network means that you can ask them to connect you to hiring managers and recruiters that they know at their company. This is a lot more effective because when they introduce you to these recruiters, they've already vetted you for them. It usually helps get a person an interview if they know somebody that's on the team. If you know somebody, talk to them. That person will get a referral bonus if you do get hired too. It'll help you get your resume looked at. Make sure that somebody's looking at your resume. Okay, let's say you finally land that interview. Yay! The first thing to do is to make sure that your technical skills are actually up to date. That's the bar of entry for doing well in these interviews. If you haven't mastered a language or framework yet, I'd highly recommend checking out today's sponsor, Codecademy. Codecademy is the easiest place to learn how to code with tons of features to help you land the career you've been dreaming of. One great feature, career pads are complete collections of courses that cover everything you need to be ready for specific tech careers. The most popular is their full stack engineering career path. This path has 162 lessons 97 projects, 141 quizzes, and even interview code challenges. They're super thorough and giving you the full learning experience. Not only that, but they also have platforms for you to ask for help. Check it out, a Discord server and forum if you need help on anything that you're working on. Having a community of like-minded people is invaluable. The first 300 people to sign up get one month of Codecademy for free. You really don't wanna miss that opportunity. So what are you waiting for? Go sign up, link is in the description. So now that you have the right technical skills, how do you pass the interviews? Now remember, we're looking at it from the perspective of not interviewing at big tech companies. That means you don't have to worry about a heavy emphasis on the really hard data structures and algorithms questions. This is just a small subsection of actual interviews that are taking place. Instead, these interviews will be more about your technical experience. You have to be able to show the interviewer that you can be part of their team. Let's look at some examples of a bad interview and a good interview. Okay, so today's question is going to be finding the longest substring without repeating characters. So here's an example. We have a string ABC, ABC, BB, and we want to find the longest substring that doesn't have repeating characters. So in this case, ABC would be the answer. So go ahead and try to find a solution to this question. <laughs> okay, the longest substring without repeating characters. The longest substring without repeating characters. Okay, so I think this is what we would do. Probably create some sort of data structure and then we're gonna loop through. And I wanna loop through the entire string, check to see if the value we're currently at has already been repeated. Hmm. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Um, what do I do first? Oh my God, she's not looking anymore. Is she even paying attention? Am I doing it badly? Okay, focus, focus. I'm going to create an array. Oh shoot. God, what was the syntax of the array again? Okay, it's fine. We'll, we'll get to that part later. Okay, so now I'm gonna create the loop and I guess it'll have to be... Okay, let's get started. <laughs> okay, so the longest substring without repeating characters. So let's just take a second to brainstorm here. So I'll tell you my thoughts. We have a string. And we want to loop through or iterate through to check if that value or that character has already been seen before. How does that sound? Yep, that sounds good. Now think about what's going to happen when you start iterating through and then you find a repeated character. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess now I'm just thinking about if we loop through, like let's say we start at a and then we and then what we can do is we can start from that second character and then continue moving forward. Yep, go ahead and start coding. Yeah, I'm ready to code. Okay, so first I'll create a data structure and this will be the can you spot the difference between the two? From the hiring manager's perspective, the first person went straight into trying to solve the problem. They didn't ask any clarifying questions or communicate what they were thinking before actually doing the thing. The second person took a long time to start coding. They spent the majority of the time asking questions and walking through the solution with the interviewer and then coding in the last 15 minutes. So which one do you think was better? Contrary to popular belief, you do not need to know the answer to an interview question right away. It doesn't matter how hard you've studied or if you know the right answer. They're looking for your problem solving abilities and your ability to communicate. They're looking for a conversation. They're looking for you to not just say, oh man, I'm too dumb to figure this out. And just like beating yourself up inside. No, turn it in, ask the interviewer. You know, I, I, the, the interviewer may be more willing to help than you realize. The next tip for interviews is to not forget about the behavioral aspect. You're being evaluated on your potential to learn and your ability to have a positive attitude. The technical skills are important, of course, but too many people neglect the other parts of the interview. You don't want to be stuck in a situation like this. Okay, Ms. Dad, let's start with the interview. Tell me about the time you dealt with conflict. 
Oh yeah, so I used to work at an ice cream place. Actually, it was Cold Stone, and there was a manager and a couple of coworkers there, and I didn't always get along with some of the coworkers. Actually, there was one coworker in particular that I didn't get along with. She actually didn't see eye to eye with me a lot of times, and she would always make me scoop the worst ice cream, which was chocolate. It was always a heavy lift to try to scoop the chocolate ice cream. Anyways, besides the point. Which, by the way, my manager, oh, and I was like, dude, it's not always deal. Me to sing song. I'll learn. And not like, like, yeah, and we used to sing the song, to the window, to the scoop to the scoop till the ice cream drips down your cone damn those ice cream cones are yummy if you follow these tips you'll be that much closer to landing that job that you desire of course it takes a lot of work on your skills up front networking and being a good communicator aren't the only things that'll help you pass these interviews but it really helps when you're surrounded by people that excel in the technical aspects and they don't necessarily pay attention to the other aspects that can help you land that job so make sure that you're paying attention to all of these things before getting into this whole process and remember you got this it takes time it takes effort and it'll take you a lot of rejection until you get that acceptance. I know you can do it.